Hey everybody, Jimmy Smith with my picks for UFC 304. Very compelling pay-per-view. Going to be very, very interesting. Of course, the title fight is Bilal Muhammad versus Leon Edwards for the welterweight title. But some really fascinating fights on this one, um, especially in the heavyweight division. I think it's going to be very, very fun. But we start out Arnold Allen versus Giga Chikadze in the featherweight division. Arnold Allen, one of those guys who... Had he been able to beat Max Holloway, could have been the next big thing in the division. That was his step-up fight. <clears throat> he was undefeated. Defeated Calvin Cater before that by by knee injury. But looked great against Dan Hooker. All he had to do was get past Max Holloway. And Max did what Max does, which is make guys look like they're unprepared for him. And uh, he lost unanimous decision there. Lost to Mosar Ivlov. No shame in either one of those losses. But... Uh, it is still two in a row, and it had been before that, 2014, his last loss. So, you know, he's on a two-fight skid. This guy's not used to being in that position. He's a big featherweight, very, very skilled, tends to win by decision. Tends to be more of a grinder, tends to use his takedown, his ground game, a little bit more than his other skill skills, but he is very well-rounded. The thing that gets me about this fight is the odds on it. Looking at DraftKings right now, it is uh, Arnold Allen... 2-1, to one, minus 218 for Arnold Allen, Giga Chikazi, plus 180. I don't agree with the odds at all. I would slightly favor Arnold Allen, but for the purposes of betting, there's no way I would take him at those kinds of odds. Giga Chikazi, one loss, um, obviously, in his UFC career, that was to Calvin Cater, Bounce back against Bruce Bruce Leroy Caceres. Not a great fighter, Bruce Leroy Caceres, but, you know, solid. You know, good enough. Um, beat, of course, Edson Barbosa, uh, Cub Swanson. Great names at a certain point. They were a little long on the tooth by the time they fought Giga Chikadze. Giga Chikadze, of course, is Georgian. He is an excellent kickboxer. He's well-rounded. Does have decent power. I, 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 once again, I slightly favor Allen. At 2-1, to one, you got to go Giga Chikadze. Period. End of sentence. Um... Now, does Giga Chikazi have decent power? Yes, but the over-under here is 2.5, and, and the over is minus 238. Yes, it'll probably be over, which is why it's, the odds are the way they are. The only way you can make money is to pick, pick the upset and pick the under. That's it, <laughs> right? I slightly favor Arnold Allen. If Arnold Allen wins, it's probably by decision, but, you know, does have a couple finishes uh, in his last couple wins, so... Uh, go with the under and go with the upset with Giga Chikazi is the only way you're going to make money on this. Arnold Allen should be the favorite. It should not be 2-1. to one. That is a, a, a little too steep, in my opinion. So, I got to go with Giga Chikazi for the money on that one, plus 180 on DraftKings right now. And the under, once again, plus 180. So, under Giga Chikazi is the only way you're going to make money. Christian Leroy Duncan versus Gregory Rodriguez. Pretty much a coin flip. Christian Leroy Duncan, a slight favorite, minus 125. Greg Rodriguez, plus 105. Um, the over on this one is minus 154. Hmm. The under is uh, plus 120. Definitely go with the under, which is one and a half for this one. They're both power strikers. They're both big for the weight class. They can both put you away. So I definitely go with the under on this one. It's going to be a battle of wills. It's going. The, both guys are very, very aggressive. But th the difference maker here, and once again, coin flip fight, and I, th I think that's appropriate for a fight like this, but it's the experience of Rodriguez, to me, that puts him over the top. He's a bit more battle-tested. Um, nickname is RoboCop, by the way, which I absolutely love. Big fan of RoboCop. But um, it's the idea that he has one loss in his last five, and that was to Bruno Ferreira, but knocked out Brad Tavares his last time out. Uh, uh, Chidi and Jukawani, very tough striker. Julian Marquez, tough guy. Finished him. The guy's just a finishing man. Very, very powerful. Not the most well-rounded, not the most athletic, not the fastest guy, but he's big for the weight class, and he's a great finisher. What I think this will come down to is who's got the will in a tough fight where both guys are very aggressive. Christian Leroy Duncan, he's talented at 10-1, and 1, hasn't found anyone worth a fart in a windstorm in his UFC career because it's just started. Right? He's only had four fights in the UFC. So the idea that he hasn't taken on great names, you kind of question yourself. When the going gets really tough and one person's been through a lot of tough fights and the other person hasn't, in the UFC at least at this level... I, I tend to go with the person who who's, who's a little more battle-tested. Maybe a little more worn, right? A little bit older, has been through some tougher fights. Chris, uh, Christian Leroy Duncan's 29 years old, right in his physical prime. But that idea of I have experience to fall back on and you don't. That's why I'm giving the edge in a coin flip fight to Rodriguez. 
Once again, I also go with the under as well. I think Rodriguez uh, or Duncan, however it, it, it works out, they're going to be aggressive early. This one might finish early. So now we get to the real meat of the card, which is King Bobby Green versus Patty Pimlet. One way I look at this is promotions, much like coaches, can't get caught up in the delusions or illusions that they might be selling other people, right? A coach can say, my guy's 100%, we had a great training camp, nothing's wrong. If your guy's a bad knee, you won't tell anybody that, but you have to coach for a bad knee, right? You can tell everybody, my guy's 100%, you know he isn't, and you have to make the proper adjustments. Hey, your knee's not great, don't do this, this, or that, right? Or, hey, we're not worried about this guy's speed or power. Yeah, in the gym, you really are worried about that guy's speed and power. And, you know, so you can say all this stuff publicly, but behind the scenes, you can't afford to believe your own crap. Okay. Promotions are like that too. They have Patty Pimlet. Patty Pimlet is a needle mover, has a huge fan base in Liverpool, all this fun stuff. He's not an elite fighter. We have not seen him have an elite performance yet at 155 pounds. He has looked to me like a mid level guy. And what they've done, the UFC, they know they have a guy who's very, very popular. They've kept them away from anything but middling talent. They know what they have. A popular guy who isn't as good as he is popular. Roger Huerta, if people remember him. Good-looking guy, all this stuff. Man, super popular, Sports Illustrated cover boy. Not a great fighter. Not elite in a very tough weight class. Kenny Florian housed him. Um, we all know about that. And then Gray Maynard, then went to Bellator. But my point is... Patty Pimlet comes with all this hype, all this fanfare, all this stuff, and I thought he lost to Jerry Gordon. I think most people with two eyeballs thought he lost to Jerry Gordon. Uh, beat up a shot, Tony Ferguson. And even in fights against guys like Caldero Hugo Vargas and Jordan Levitt, uh, Luigi Vendramini, he gets rocked and hit by guys that just shouldn't be able to do that to elite fighters. And they're not doing it to a lead fighter. They're doing it to a mid-level guy. So he's it wasn't even necessarily the Tony Ferguson fight or the Jared Gordon fight that made me think, oh, this guy's suspect. He got dropped in early fights or hit and rocked by guys that should not be landing big punches against him. He should be mowing these guys down. So another thing to keep in mind is most fighters, elite fighters, on the way up are mowing down mid-level guys. They're not really having a whole lot of trouble. They're more showcases than fights. If you are getting hurt or getting hit or, you know, as I said with Shara Bullet, when he was getting hit, I was like, dude, if these guys hit you, the elite are going to beat you up. And I think Patty Pimlet knows that. Or the UFC knows that about Patty Pimlet, which is why they're bringing up him up as gradually as they can. You can only do it. You can't really pull him back and keep any credibility. So they can't throw him in there with scrubs. They can't give him softballs. So you move him up as slowly as you can. So, all right, now Bobby Green, a guy who's a little shopworn, been through a lot. Maybe he can win, but I got to go with Bobby Green. Why? Uh, Bobby Green is powerful. He is creative. He's versatile. He's very, very experienced. Doesn't have a bad ground game. Submitted Tony Ferguson. So it's not as though Patty Pimlet's ace in the hole is he has a good ground game. It's not world class. He does. He's not Gilbert Burns or any of these guys and Damian Meyer, Crone Gracie. He's not, not one of those guys you're like, oh, my God, he could win a world title. He's not there. He's good. Um, but, you know, Bobby Green's not bad on the ground, and he's hard to take down. He does have a wrestling background. The only worry I have about this, and when you look at the odds on DraftKings, Bobby Green is a slight favorite. I think he's minus 120. Yeah, he's minus 120 at DraftKings. Um, he does tend to, in the words of Bain, fight like a younger man, right? He drops his hands. He, he, he mugs a bit. As you get older, your ability to read your opponent's offense, right? You're not Pernell Whitaker. You, you, you can't see everything coming when you get a little bit older and a little bit slower. Bobby Green does still have a tendency to take these physical risks that you can get away with in your 20s, but you can't get away with as you get older, as you go through some more fights, as you take some more punches. And if you look at the Jalen Turner fight, he just like kind of dropped his hands and started mugging and clowning, and he's got clipped and dropped, and that was it. He's 37 years old. You slow down a little bit at that point. So there is a chance, if you're a Patty Pimlet fan, that he does the same thing. He drops and mugs and clowns at the wrong time and gets, gets clipped, okay? Not that Patty Pimlet is a knockout striker, but, hey, anybody can get caught. I'm still going to Bobby Green because I think, and he said at the press conference, I've been through more than you. More experience than you. I've fought tougher guys than you. I've been hit harder than you. I think he just has the advantages to win this. Not out of the realm of possibility that Patty Pimlet could do it, but I'm going with Bobby Green probably uh, by finish. Uh, good chance he knocks him out. And what's the over-under here? Uh, over is minus 160. Under is plus 
one twenty four. So so, um, I would definitely go with the under on this one. Yeah, maybe Bobby Green catches him. You're going to make money on the under. So, Tom Aspinall, Curtis Blades. If I weren't such a Tom Aspinall fan, I'd go with Curtis Blades. It is, right now on DraftKings, I don't believe this, minus 395. Four to one favorite is Tom Aspinall. Jesus, Curtis Blades is plus 310. And this is almost anyone else, especially in the heavyweight division. As I said about Alex Pereira, if you saw my video about him, dude, heavyweights hit hard. They all hit hard, right? Any Anybody can get clipped at heavyweight and go down. Even if you're not, Curtis Blades is, is a good striker. He's not great, and he's not the most powerful guy at heavyweight. Still has good ground and pound. I was there when he ground and pounded over him, you know, hit him with an elbow on the ground, and blood came out over his face. He crushed him. So, you know, still heavyweights. Things can happen. I'm just a huge fan of Tom Aspinall. I think he's been doing great work. I think he's the best heavyweight in the world. I think he's the best heavyweight we've seen in a long time. I think he's part of kind of a new era of heavyweight. So I'm still going with Tom Aspinall. But these odds are stupid. Four to one in a heavyweight fight at the elite level is absurd. Simply because anybody can get clipped. But I think Tom Aspinall is so good. So well-rounded. So confident. Fighting at home. Um, I think he's got the right attitude. He's got the right mindset. He's right in his physical prime. Everything seems to be going his way. And also Curtis Blades. One of those guys, if, let's say, if the odds makers are correct, and I'm correct, I think Tom Aspinall's going to win, um, Curtis Blades loses his fight and never gets a title shot. He'll be one of those guys, like I would say Jacare, right, who probably is number one on my list of guys, most talented fighters who never get a title shot. Curtis Blades was always right there and then lost to somebody. And then, uh, it was always right there. He was always one fight away from a title shot. So Curtis Blades... A very talented guy, but always one fight away. And I think Tom Aspinall does it again. I think he's just, you know, Curtis Blades just one fight away from a title shot. I don't think he wins it. I think Aspinall's too good. His angles are too good. His versatility's too good. He is decent on the ground as well. Um, I think give you a wrestling advantage to Curtis Blades, but I don't see Curtis Blades taking him down and grinding him as long as he needs to to win the fight. I just don't see that. Uh, Tom Aspinall, very, very dangerous guy everywhere. So... I don't like the odds. I go with Tom Aspinall. You want to make some money. Um, I would say the over-under, it's plus 140 is over. Um, yeah, Curtis Blades is a durable guy. You know, it's possible Tom Aspinall is dominant, but it gets past around and a half. I think going with the over for the money isn't bad at plus 140. So I go with the over on this one, but got to go with Tom Aspinall, even at 3-1. to one. Almost 4-1. to one. Leon Edwards, Bilal Muhammad. Once again, Leon Edwards, way too much of a favorite at minus 258. Jesus. <sighs> That's way too much. But um, there are certain guys. Uh, as you know, I'm, I'm working on Pro Box TV. I call a lot of boxing stuff now. But working with, with Chris Algieri, Pauli Malinaji, and one of the things Chris Algieri said that I really agree with, being a champion makes certain fighters better. Like they were good, and then they won a world title, and they got great. It just kicks them up to another level. It, it justifies or validates everything they thought about themselves, right? I'm great, blah, 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 blah. It kicks it. Some people, the belt is a burden to them. Leon Edwards became champion and got better. I really believe he got more confident. He got more belief in himself. Uh, his, he, he, his skills are, are right where they need to be right now to, to be welterweight champion and get past Bilal Muhammad. Hurts to say. Because I'm a big fan of Bilal Muhammad. I really like him professionally, personally. Interviewed him many, many times. College fight in Bellator. Um, he's a good guy. And he's one of those guys who, much like um, Benil Darius, just everything has to go right for him to get a title shot. He gets one. If he loses, probably never going to get one again. He is getting a little long in the tooth. All these things. The major factor to me in this fight is... Leon Edwards' ability to control range. It makes wrestling against him very, very difficult. And he's gotten better and better at it. Meaning, Kamar Usman, Colby Covington, two of the greatest MMA wrestlers of their era, which is this current era. And his ability to just play the outside, he has a tricky stand-up uh, game in the first place, works, uh, 
works great with his long tools, meaning a lead jab, lead foot. He's great at controlling range and keeping guys at the outside. Not that he has the best, you know, sprawl in the world. It's not a matter of his his hips are so heavy he's hard to take down or he has a great wrestling experience. He doesn't. He keeps you so far outside that you got to really risk that no man's land to get in. And in the second Kamaru Usman fight, we saw a real development in that takedown defense, that ability to control range and keep him at the outside. Bilal, I don't think, I think he's a level below Colby Covington and Kamaru Usman in terms of his MMA wrestling. I think he's having trouble getting through again. To me, that's the fight. Is he's able to keep Bilal outside, pick him apart, tack, tack, tack. He's not a knockout striker. Yes, everybody's talking about the. Kamaru Usman, a head kick knockout. Kind of the, you know, exception that proves the rule. He can outbox you or out kickbox you most of the time. Doesn't necessarily knock you out. He's used to winning by decision. I don't see that as a negative. I see it as a positive. At the elite level, folks, you fight more five rounders. You fight tougher fighters who can go a lot longer. you got to be used to the grind. And Leon Edwards' style, he's been grinding for a long time. He doesn't need to knock you out. He's used to going 25 minutes. Once again, working with Chris Algeri and Pauli Malinaji, neither guy were knockout punchers. And they said, I had to be ready to work for 12 rounds. And it, there's just something in your head where you're used to putting in that kind of work, and Leon Edwards is. And so was Bilal Muhammad. But I think he's able to keep Bilal Muhammad on his back foot and on, on the outside the entire time. Now, on the other side, if you're a Bilal Muhammad fan, he's looking better than he ever has. And um, the Sean Brady fight, to me, was was huge. But I think Sean Brady's one of the most talented fighters at 170 pounds. I think he might be a future champion. But he was pretty new at the elite level. And it was one of those wake-up calls where he saw the difference between where he is and a veteran guy who's been there before. Bilal very experienced. And I think Sean Brady not quite mentally ready for that step up against Bilal. And then, of course, the Gilbert Burns fight. As we all know, Gilbert got pretty severely injured going for a takedown early, and he was hobbled the rest of the fight. So, as good as Bilal is, look, there are little things that make me go, okay, maybe it's not quite enough to beat Leon Edwards. It's close, and it also, this is, two whatever it is, minus 200, is absurd. Really hard for me to not put money on Bilal Muhammad, but I do have faith in Leon Edwards in this one. So, anyway, I will own it. As always, on Monday, enjoy the weekend of fights. Like, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys later.